to read on them. First of all, I'm going to be very embarrassed at the end of some of my children see that I actually had to put some lighting points. Uh, Here, uh, one of our major initiatives is to focus uh, primarily on diversifying the economy of Miami. And given the fact that this city is really known for creativity and originality, and uh, really all of the ingredients that are required for innovation and startup activity, um, it's become one of our core areas of, of focus. Um, the city's uh, really undergone a transition where it's you know, for some in the fun and going out some nightclubs and, and all that. And just looking around here, I can see that that's still the case in some instances. <laughs> but we've also become known for um, being a launch pad for great companies. And so when we take a look at what's the closest analog to the really ultra competitive nature of startup, uh, the startup environment, we can also uh, frequently draw inspiration from professional sports and especially professional athletes. Who of course live uh, and die in the ultra competitive environment of, of professional uh, sports. And so we're delighted um, to have this type of discussion today to hear about their uh, experiences transitioning from uh, the world of professional uh, athletics to, to startup. Um, for uh, transitioning, And I would also like to acknowledge our co-sponsors here, 500 Startups, IBM TV, BSCP Plus Collateral Group, and of course, the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science. Um, we're very honored uh, to have Daniel Batard here and uh, to host this session today. Um, one of Miami's favorite sons. Dan, of course, is famously known as a newspaper sports writer, radio host, and television reporter. And of course, best known for his work with um, not only the Miami Herald, but of course for ESPN, which is constantly uh, playing in our uh, shared workspace. So it's, uh, it is an honor to uh, to make this introduction. So for, for sports fans and non-sports fans alike, um, it's a real real pleasure, and we're really uh, happy to have you here. Um, so thanks again for participating and hosting. Pleasure. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. For those of you who do not know, I do a television show with my father. I'm a very Miami guy, but not quite so Miami that I don't need the loud Latin cartoon next to me to sort of give off more Miami than that. These guys, I want to introduce you to here because I'm a proud Miami son, and I'm happy that anyone is investing in the idea of what's going on down here and in Florida. So I would start by telling you that uh, this gentleman here, I'm not going to let them brag about their athletic accomplishments, but I will tell you that this is top 1% of the top 1% when you get to professional athletics. And however competitive you think the money world is, these guys were climbing over the inner cities fighting for dollars to get to where it is that they got. And so he had success. I think he had the toughest job of the three of you, right? But the, right, Desmond, Brian, doing some. He weighed a little more than this. He was a defensive tackle, and that's the roughest job, right? Like that's that's hurt your body stuff. Oh yeah, to bang, bang, everything. Not that it was easy for you either, mm -hmm. Lamar Houston as a linebacker, but you needed him in order to be able to do the job because he was being eaten by the fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so both yeah. of these guys, uh, I, 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 they're friends. They played with the Oakland Raiders in 2010. I want to say 2011. And so why don't you tell first, Desmond, why don't you tell the people what it is before we get to Mark over there, the tallest of our friends. He's seven foot tall, and I didn't mean to neglect you just because they play more physical sport than you. We will get to it in a moment. I didn't have any class. Can you just tell the people what it is? How it is that you transitioned, what it is you transitioned into within tech and within real estate. Okay, uh, so in my final few years of playing, I started investing with a few guys I went to college with. It's an acquisition we have here. So that went on for about five years until I actually moved to a development. Now we are acquisition on land or, or again, on apartment buildings. We're moving into co living. Trend in affordable housing and, and uh, still advocates areas. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, Lamar and I uh, started the 
a lead venture, which is access community in the investment world as, as you might find in the basketball locker room. So Lamar and I set off to kind of create that for retired players and, and ongoing players. So like, uh, forgive me, I erred there. I make a lot of mistakes. Miguel, I couldn't see you behind him, so I forgot to tell the people. Early now, you go through 500 startups. Real quick, before we go any further, can you tell people, the ignorant like me, what that is, what it is that you believe in, why it is we're here today? Sure. So, 500 startups, we're a global VC firm. Um, we're based out of, well, our headquarters is based out of San Francisco. I was just there for two weeks, but uh, over the last couple weeks, uh, very, very little um, we've made investments in about 2,475 different countries around the world. It's about $150,000. Uh, and the whole goal is that we make the investment, accelerate the startups, help them grow, and then, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, we make the, the nice return for us and our investors. We will talk to you in a second about what it is that's going on in Florida Tech because I don't associate our state with tech, so perhaps you can <laughs> enlighten me. But Lamar, can you explain uh, to the people because it is, it's almost an athletic cliche to squander your money, to think you're going to be youthful forever, to think you're going to be bullet because you look at where your uh, success. How did you know better? along with that. You know, good finance and small business. So uh, I took those opportunities to educate myself. myself in the time of uh, looking to achieve more venture capitalism. So uh, as a young player I signed up for several uh, continuing education courses through the school and here in Miami as well. And you've got all sorts of people coming to you all the time with some top name business idea and wanting some code and I do recommend that. So because they all uh, they see some money, they smell some money, but before we get to Mark here, in your case, you were a second round pick. Um high pick, but then they've got you sort of locked in contractually. You play for seven years the position. It's a good amount of money, but it ain't rich, rich money. And it ain't gonna last you. If you do not invest it correctly, you will not have it in your sixties. And that's, and that's mainly what our group is aiming to educate players on, is how to grow exponential wealth. The money you make from football is it's very good money, and unfortunately, it's a very short lived career. So when you retire from football, you've got the next 30 years of life ahead of you, and uh, a few million dollars isn't really going to cut it. But when you take the time and you do the due diligence and you go through the process and you can mitigate your risk, investing it in the right things and working on with people like 500 startups. So here I was mentioning to you uh, that Mark Blount, who played with the Miami Heat, he, uh, you got a good Pat Riley story for us before we get into the, the business stuff? Like that was a big story. And, 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 and did, what did you learn? What did you learn playing? What athletically helped you shape what it is your business philosophy is? You've got to be brave. You've got to be courageous. But can you uh, explain to people first, before you go down that path, what it is you're doing now and how it is you arrived there? Oh, so Spirit Capital Group, we're just a complete uh, uh, acquisition of uh, a multifamily and uh, hospitality property. So our LLC is um, pretty much uh, getting the um, acquisition under contract. Um, if it's a uh, pre-sale development or development deal, we are doing all the rendering, we're doing all the um, permits, and then we go out and we, we, we pitch it to investors. So it's a complete package where, we're, where the and it's ready to go and sign and close that title. We just get the yes or no and then we move it on. And uh, we just keep doing that for each uh, particular property that we look for. It sounds like it has next to nothing to do with what you learned in your career <laughs> as an athlete. Like, I don't know. How, how do you end up there? Or what are the things that helped shape athletically what your business Well, I was a second round pick as well. Um, went to uh, Seattle Supersonic. Uh, Sean Kent, Darren Payton. That the strip was on the team, was there for two weeks, and George Charles told me there was nothing I could do to help this team. And then I went to um, tuck my tail, went to Paris for a year, I went to Greece for a year, and came back and uh, had an 11 year career. So resilience and uh, um, you know, working on my craft and uh, being in the real estate sector since 2012, I've uh, worked on my craft, and that's why my sphere is uh, 
being able to uh, offer this kind of opportunity for investors and uh, general entrepreneurs on their level. How did you two decide the field that you were going to try? Like when you're thinking yourself after your career and you're talking about how are we going to make money after this? Like what are the choices and how did you arrive when you arrived in 2013? Uh, well, we're playing. Like you said, there's, there's plenty of people coming. Oh, here's here's a deal, here's a deal, uh, and you don't really know as a player which which deals are the ones you want to get into. And so, what's the worst one you got off? Of? What's the worst? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm floating furniture. That might help us. Uh, all three of them. How many of all three of you giving this story? Like the worst business proposition you had coming your way. The worst one. Uh, some players have developed what we call the shower pill. Uh, so after practice, whoever didn't take a shower, you call it. He said, oh, they took a shower pill. So some players had developed a towel with some kind of water and some kind of soap that was what you're supposed to use that. And then so you take a shower. How many bad and how many You got, can you top it? I think I just made a flat out scam. Someone was like, oh, you know, I take I take numbers, like people's credit card numbers or something, or even these, and like use it at a grocery store. And like, <laughs> 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 <I'm> <laughs> you were laughing hardest though, because no, Mark, you got offered some bad stuff, it sounds like. No, I don't think it was bad. It was just more of my ego got in the way on this one. So I was with a uh, focus brand. Out of Atlanta, they owned um, franchises. I was already in the franchise. I had uh, two Indians and two Cinnabons, so I learned about those those very successful. And um, corporate came to me and asked me, "Well, we have an additional one uh, not far from you, and you're doing so well with those. Why don't you take that one?" I'm like, "Of course, I can turn that around." And I did. <laughs> did you? How did you arrive at tech? How did you arrive at real estate versus all the other things you could have chosen? Right. Uh, again, it, we, we just saw that there's no real way to. Uh, can't think. Um, there's no real way for us to, to for us to discern which avenues are the best ones to go down. And so that's why Lamar and I started we ventures to, to promote the education and the tech. You know, there, there was no real. You know, we were on the bed. We never met any of the people in Silicon Valley. We never really. Uh, those are very different worlds. Those yeah. are the locker room. Right. Those are very different worlds. And so we never established those relationships, and we feel like there should be that connection there. And so that's why we chose to do. Did you run into anything, Lamar? Underestimated because you're athletes and you're walking into a tech world, and uh, you know both worlds are filled with drama. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a very risky, risky industry. Um, I think uh, the most challenging thing for us is just understanding. You know what deals fit our strategy and stick to our strategy. Um, but right now we're very, we're very young into this and we're developing. So our challenges are just first establishing ourselves as a group and, and making sure we get a little more variety through our works as uh, investors. Um, but I think you know just the number of deals you can see, uh, the amount of money people are asking for is. Uh, it's just it's just remarkable, but the challenges of understanding which which one of those deals are, are in your strategy and not just because it's a bunch of things you think that are great that you should invest in. So our challenge is, is, is basically honing in on our strategy. I find some of this like overwhelming because I'm not financially savvy as to Mark. When you're just talking about going from franchises into what it is that you merge into. How did you make that decision? And no, I was, was it a safe decision? That's when I was my first thing. So I was with a franchise and I just got into real estate. That was after 2012 or 2011. So I was doing the franchise and then I also got into the real estate up in Palm Beach Gardens area where I was at and I was doing this simultaneously and then I did this, uh, you know, exit those both um, on the, on the Pretty good time, except for the, the one franchise that was long ago, but other than that, that was great. But, um, um, you know, I, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to do a little bit more of the uh, commercial space, bigger units, and uh, some of the, uh, you know, 25, 50, 75 feet, I mean, uh, 25, uh, 75 unit property. So that's why I started figuring and being able to um, focus my attention on it. And it wasn't just perfect at the beginning, I was just like all over the map, and then, you know, just as I kept working on it, that's why I was able to get it over the last couple of years to where I'm uh, offering a, a great service to uh, the 
you know, to invest instead of doing all the legwork. I've done all the legwork. I've done everything you, you needed. All you're doing is looking at everything right in front of you. Yes or no, that's it. Miguel, I uh, I don't think of Florida. Am I am I being an idiot? I don't think of Florida at all as a tech place. And so when I heard that you guys were coming in here, I didn't even understand the link. And you, am, am I that ill informed, or is it changing? Right no, now? I mean, um, first off, and this is my personal opinion. I personally don't think that any company is a tech company. Like that just doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, it's you are a company, and you either use technology to advance and move faster, or you don't. Right, and if you do, the chances of scaling is is much easier. Right, there's better profit margins, etc. Um, so, 500 startups, we make investments in tech-enabled companies. But what has differentiated us from all of our peers, especially when we were founded 10 years ago, is that we went outside of Silicon Valley first. Everyone said, "Oh, if you want to make it, if you want to receive an investment from us, you have to come into San Francisco." We were the first ones that said, no, actually, we'll come to you and we'll make something happen. Um, in Florida, we've seen two things. We've seen building blocks. We've seen smart people with uh, good uh, backgrounds from college to, to career paths. And then we've also seen a connection to Latin America. So it's a spot that for us uh, makes sense to have a strategic uh, position where we can look south and look here. Um, to answer your question specifically from what we've seen, we have trained, I'm doing mental math, about 120 startups over the past 18 months through two day boot camps and another 19 through two eight week accelerator programs. The, the startups that have gone through all those programs, just the ones based in Miami alone, have gone on to raise a little over $16 million. And these are startups, <clears throat> excuse me, that are just beyond product market fit, right? Just barely getting uh, past that. So the, what they've done after our work, uh, after working with us, but also them themselves, they've gone out and, and grown by themselves. Um, so for us, talent's everywhere. It's just a matter of how do we provide resources to them. And yeah, we've been finding those, that talent here. Uh, we want a piece of that talent, meaning we want to make more investments in these startups because it's good for us. So yes, it is. It's got, it's got what's necessary. Were you guys in the locker room discussing this stuff before it ended? Were you guys <laughs> discussing how we, before the professional careers ended, like that we need to plan for the next 20 years and the proximity to Silicon Valley? Did that actually, is like if you guys weren't, hadn't been in Oakland, might you have chosen a different path or did you know exactly what you were choosing because of your regional specificity? Um, you know, that's the important. I think if we were not in Oakland, chosen path. Um, fortunately, the way we became friends is we were always discussing the future of after football, what we like to do, we want to own companies, we want to make more money, you know, we want this to be the foundation of life that we build on. And being there, you get a lot of great opportunities. We ran into a uh, guy named Ryan East who takes you on a tour of all the major capital companies and you get to sit down and listen to them, listen to their stories of how they became who they are now. So that sparked our interest in the field, and then we've kind of always stayed in contact and always kind of kept an entrepreneurial mindset about what we wanted to do in life. And we uh, took another program in Boston uh, recently called Drive, that's uh, held by DraftKings, where they uh, talk about venture capital, angel investing, and things like that. We basically sat down and was like, we have this idea to develop a platform for players in an industry where there's someone to talk about debt prevention and conventional investing, and we can show this avenue of venture capitalism to players, not only introduce it to them, but educate them about it. And that's basically how we, we built the nucleus of our group. Mark, is there anything along before when you were playing basketball? Were you thinking of any of this stuff? Were you thinking of the mortality of, like, look, this is only going to last so long because? I'm telling you, I run into young guys all the time. Once you've arrived in professional sports, it's a finish line. It's a destination for all the work, and you feel like you've got it figured out. You're young, you're youthful, you don't have the wisdom of experience. Right. And the next thing you know, your career's over in six or seven years, and you're like, well, wait a minute, I thought this was going to keep going. When did you start thinking about, I need to do this stuff right, and I need to do it big, because you're not doing it bashfully. Right. So, um, I, uh, I do. I wanted to be in the uh, the, uh, the space, the space, and uh, 
So, um, you know, probably like my fourth, fifth year in the league, I started uh, coming back and just um, just learning uh, through a couple of uh, commercial um, commercial developers and uh, out of, uh, I was in Palm Beach County at that time, so working with them and just, uh, you know, had lunches and dinner, you know, every, every off season, just coming back and just networking and starting to learn the, uh, starting to learn the space. I mean, there's so much to learn from just, uh, you know, contractual to, you know, dealing with facilities and all this stuff. So once I started getting the, um, the information, um, you know, over the years before I retired, now it's like, okay, what kind of plan do I want to put together? And still all of the map, and then you know, as you start uh, digging down and dig, digging deep into uh, uh, objectives for your business, and then you, you can start focusing it. But yes, uh, you know, it was a, it was a goal, it was a plan. Uh, it took you know, it took a while, it took several years to, to bring it under, under focus because we're still playing, we're still working out, we still got family, we still got opportunity, we still got the you know, the team you know, demanding for us. So it's just uh, you know, for us, it just took a little bit a while longer to get this to. Get that objective under control for the, uh, for, the, for the company. What were the mistakes, Desmond, that you guys made earlier? The things you know now that you didn't know back when you know there's a learning curve on any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what was some of the stuff early on that you didn't know, or if you preferred another way, what are some of the things you wish you'd known back then that you know now? Right. <clears throat> when uh, we first got introduced to the VC world, you know, everybody's talking about the numbers that, that have been seen in, in VC over the last ten years drastically outpacing all of the markets really. And so Lamar and I were like, okay, well we're gonna get in and we're gonna get into you know late stage companies and we're gonna write them five thousand dollar checks and we're gonna get you know a hundred X on the money, you know, we're gonna make so much money. And you know we realized uh, over time uh, with the mistakes we made uh, that you know that's not really how this works, you know uh, more often than not these companies fail and the only way for us to be able to to maintain that same time kind of a check size is through investing in earlier stage, but more risky companies. But again, if we're, if we're looking to hit these home runs, if you will, uh, that's kind of where we have to transition to our, our business strategy. For. Would, you have, or would your answer be the same? Well, it's similar, yeah, because we had to figure out, uh, like I said earlier, how we hung in our strategy when it comes to investing. You know, maybe earlier we could Try to get a quick return on some of the investment, but we figured out that we had to start from the startup stage to actually get a good piece of equity in the whole company and have a nice return. And basically, we really had to hold on our, our strategy and really, really break it down so that we stick to it and are able to use it and apply it when we invest. It's usually people don't tend to be very patient with their money at a youthful age. How would you answer that question? Um, so when I started back in 2012, I had, uh, did the acquisition side with, uh, with my uh, former company up in the Palm Beach, Gar Palm Beach Gardens area. So I said, oh, well, I'll do the property management company too. So I'll work a property management company and I'll do the acquisition. The property management, I'm rolling. So they started calling me, and then the air conditioner not working, and they had to put a battery in there, and then you know I'm on the ground and running around, and you know, and all this stuff. So you know, you're definitely working, working, uh, you know, both ends of it. So that that was, uh, you know, a little bit of shell shock. Just like you know, first of all, they're like, I'm not going to do it. It's like, did you put a battery in there? Thermostat. Okay, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> so that was. Uh, I'm wondering, Desmond, and this might be a dumb question. Uh, athletics is more competitive than business, correct? By leaps and bounds. Like I don't, I understand that people think on Wall Street or fight, the Silicon Valley the fighting for dollars is super competitive, and it is, but it ain't like athletics competitive, is it? Uh, if you want to compare it to game day, uh, the, the, the what you do is crazy. What you do is the two of you. You have it. All of you have to stand on the side. I'm standing there with Ricky Williams, who's pretty rugged on the side of the thing. What am I doing? Like, why did I do this for a living? It's crazy out there. Yeah. If you compare it to on the field, in the game, uh, in the trenches, in particular, taking on a double team, yes, that, there's nothing like that in the world. But uh, obviously, business world is extremely competitive as well. With all the money that is out there and all the money that's to be made, you know, it's, it's just this cutthroat. Um, but, you know, 
I don't know if people really compare. Yeah, but if you were advising the average person, you would if you were giving advice to a youngster, you would say choose the business path, not the athletics path. So. <laughs> For me, I always wanted to do both. Uh, I always wanted to do both. I know that it's so hard to do both because I mean, to get to where you guys are, it's a sculpting on a craft. You don't have, you can't have real time to get expertise in somewhere else. When Pat Riley's chasing your ass all over the place, making you do suicides. There's no time. Throwing the balls across court, telling everybody down. <laughs> you know, it's a very challenging. I think uh, the business world is competitive. And I said, this is why I like doing venture capitalism because I think it's the only industry that's comparable. You know, you got to do a lot of analyzing. You have to understand your companies, just like you have to understand your opponents. You have to see what they do well, how they perform, where they don't perform well. So it's kind of a similar approach when you're studying the company you want to invest in. Venture capitalism, you have to do a lot of due diligence. You have to have a great team that can do a lot of great things. So for me, it's just as competitive. Different type of competition because we don't have that respect. Right. If, <laughs> I, if I would ask you guys, though, to impart some piece of wisdom or some piece of advice, we'll start with you, Mark, and bring it back this way, where you tell a young investor, look, this is something that you need to know. This is this is something that's important. Do you have one piece of advice beyond all the others that you would give to a youngster? Um, just um, I, would, I would be able to uh, map out early. Where you uh, where you see that uh, you want to uh, take your take your goal and take your uh, take your uh, future endeavors and um, be able to focus on uh, not only like just the goals driven but what opportunity to be successful and be um, be have a great opportunity or a great uh, uh, service in that sector that you're in. So be able to drill down to that specific detail. I think that uh, that will help them focus. And so, tell right now. How about you, Lamar? Um, you know, I think that the most important advice I can give is try to learn how to continue to educate yourself. Find a way to understand and, and, and digest more information. The more information you can gather, the more you can understand, the better you'll be informed and making decisions. How about you, Lamar? Uh, just that investments are inherently risky. Before you think about any investment, you have to be prepared to not get that money back. Uh, and in order to kind of mitigate that risk, you have to have this strong team in place that, that knows what they're doing, that knows whatever sector or industry that you're trying to invest in, and that they can really give you correct information about whether or not this is a good investment, they do the proper diligence, and kind of make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. How about you, Miguel? You got any advice? You got any advice for people in this room about what it is that they need to be doing with their money? I think Advice with money? No, that's not allowed me to give that, that advice. No, I'm asking. <laughs> I, I think, Lamar, you, you mentioned a really good point, and it's um, it's all about educating yourself, right? Um, for example, for me, the very first time that I ever sat in a room and looked at startups and picked the right ones, there's plenty of things that I got right, and there's plenty of things, more things that I got wrong. And what I had was a really good boss that said, everyone goes through this. This is something that everyone uh, deals with and the way that you get better at this is you just keep doing it over and over and over again. So to your point, Dan, like being having the time to do it while you're a professional athlete is, I can imagine, very difficult to do. Um, but educating yourself, learning more about the, the types of investments that you want to do, that's really what's going to what's going to send you a, a, a long way. I don't have all the questions and curiosities, so if there's anyone in the audience, if there's anything that you'd like to cover with any of the gentlemen, uh, feel free to let me know if anyone else has any other questions and would like to get involved in this. Uh, if you guys, Desmond, Lamar, Mark, we go. Okay. Uh, for all of you guys, I'm coming here to say I'm not really from Chicago. And, uh, I created for a while ago that basically told me that I'm sort of putting the platform together so that when people come to you, they have their, I guess, story together. But I guess, how do you go about identifying the individual clients that you need? So, um, from I really the ball. <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's really just a matter of learning from individuals that have done it before. 
um, first and foremost. And then it's coming up. So at 500, we have a system that we use to select startups, and we're never satisfied with that system. We run it, we see how we did, um, we figure out what we did wrong, and then we correct that for next time. And we're constantly iterating and constantly making it better. Um, right before this meeting, I came off of the task force, but that's exactly what we were looking at. So it's never being satisfied and always wanting to, to do more. Um, that's from kind of like an internal perspective, and then actually doing it. Here. It's meeting as many startups as possible and then like trying to pick up the trends at 500 when we make investments. A good idea is important. Making money is important, don't get me wrong. But more than anything else, it's the people. Um, we make investments at such an early stage, we are investing in the people because it's such uh, uh, early companies. If you have a bad five without the person, it's probably better that you don't make that investment. Um, so that's my advice. Um, for me, it's my um, two head lead counsels. One gentleman is 71 years old, and the other guy is 62 years old. So they, they've been here longer before me, and they've, um, they've uh, one of those gentlemen is in banking, he's been banking, one of them was in the real estate. So I need them, I need them on them when we're about to uh, do a contract, we're about to put a uh, project together, and um, so we're doing it over eight years now. And to them for this time, I won't even lean on them that much. So, if I can use them, yeah, it's for one. Yeah, so having the, the right to appear in front of me, you know, saying, do the deal. So, uh, <coughs> you actually need to do yeah. it. Yeah. That's okay. We've got yeah. so many Miguel's in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, just having the history and having the, the information that we wanted to get together together. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Ian? Well, fortunately, I've uh, always been around here so many people. Somehow. Uh, <coughs> But I built my team uh, mainly around uh, the institution of Morgan Stanley today. So we have a team house there that helps us do all our back office stuff. And then our due diligence team is ran by experienced investment bank banking employees that came to JP Morgan. I'm sorry, excuse me. So basically, <laughs> We basically lean on them, and they are all very uh, experts in the IV banking side of things. Mm -hmm. How about you, Desmond? Similar? Yeah, let me ask you real quick. Were you referring to the <coughs> and the other athletes that we're bringing on uh, to our platform, or the team, the structural team that we have in place? The folks that you're using to make your decision. Like, if I came to you right now and said, I need a team of us, I just want to know. So there are individuals uh, that got friends of us uh, and people that work for him that, that's their job. Okay, if I have, you come to me with something and if I like it enough, then I send it to them and they, they overlook it. Uh, other than that, I would also lean on, you know, people around me. Uh, you know, I have friends in all the different industries, uh, particularly if you're talking about something in real estate, you know, I've been, like, yeah, I've been working with these guys for like six, seven years. Anything real estate related, I'm ready to buy them. You know, I'm leaning on all the individuals around me. Uh, but I also have, you know, structurally, uh, a team that's in place that is there for anything I need. Anyone else want to get in here? Okay, so you draw on uh, some characteristics from the winning sort of uh, athlete that that are the consistent winners in terms of what you back. And I'd be curious from the from the sports side, but then Miguel from the uh, from the principal side, if there's certain things that are quasi athletic type skills, you know, whether it's you know teamwork or whether it's just this. Who wants to attack that one? Well, uh, for me, it's, uh, I got to be, uh, I got to know everybody's job. <coughs> so, you know, if I'm asking for something and I don't, I don't already know it, I don't have it, you know, I'm just like, what are you doing? So, I, for me, it's, that's, I, I look at on that end. So, yes, it's keyword, but then you still got to know. Anybody else want to track it that? Or? For me, it's just being uh, persistent and knowing how to work hard in the right, in the right way. So, um, you know, when you're an athlete, a lot of people say you can do a lot of hard work or you can get, uh, work hard in the right way. Like, you can just be out running running lines or you can actually be out running routes. So, I uh, take the same uh, approach to business where I work hard, but I try to work hard in an appropriate manner. 
Well, you know what, like Miguel said, when we first started starting to really look at the people um, before we further to take off rights, we, we look at the people, we look at the product, and we you know, we gain you know, our interest in it. If something you're interested in, we really do a deeper dive and we want to look at your individual culture and your investor base and all those things. Um, but as, as to start off, we just specifically look ourselves and see if it's going to get that. It's our strategy. And you all know, have a good idea. I mean, nobody's the smartest person in the world. I mean, you know, for example, I uh, before I did this when I was playing, a couple had approached me and they they were offering me to invest in Wolf and Shepherd. I don't know if you've heard about Wolf and Shepherd. It's a nice uh, dress shoe that has like an athletic soul. You know, now they have they have Cody rest in peace. They have uh, Steve Nash and a lot of people involved in it. And uh, the other day, I just said they have a story at the Beverly Center. <laughs> this is the one idea I thought was a terrible idea. A great idea, a great idea. But um, that started off in the case of me looking at the tunnel and then I didn't really like it, so I didn't really take it so further. Yeah, um, from our perspective, at the very early stage, when they're just, just starting to now make money, we want to look at the product and then we want to see are they actually making money and what's your clientele look like. And so once it gets beyond that, then we really dive into to the person because that's typically for our gym. For our accelerators and our investments, like you can very quickly get that out of the way to basic. And I mean, again, we really dive into the people. And the, what comes with experience over years of doing this is you find out how to ask specific questions or you find out how to extract information, um, not necessarily about the company, but about themselves that helps you determine if it's a good investment. Currently, yes, we're just uh, angel investing with capital aid that we've accumulated, but our platform is we're also like doing the same. We're bringing this, we're doing all the due diligence, figuring out whatever projects you want to get involved in, and then we're bringing it to our friends uh, within the, in the athletic world. And so we're giving them that opportunity at no cost. Uh, eventually, we do intend to raise the funds, but right now, we're just you know building our, our brand recognition. We're seeing we're seeing the base. Depends on the project. Uh, some of them, some of the investors might want to put skin in the game as well. Um, or we can do a uh, first uh, UCC on it, or we can do uh, shares of pay, so whatever it's under. So depends on what the, 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 the could be a both family or could be a house of power. It depends on the project. So you guys came to business together, right? Somehow somebody came to you with an idea, and you decided to do it. So in the NFL, certain uh, avenues or lanes for them to be able to be educated and not uh, just start early before they retire or before they age. What advice or what do you think you can tell athletes? I've been around athletes my whole life. I ran multiple health clubs for over 15 years before I had cancer. So I ended up learning a lot about what they did. Now the people that I met were at the top level. So you guys now are part of the business. How do you make it a fun way to make it Side and try to teach, right? And try to help to get maybe a program, or maybe there is a program I don't know about it. And that's, I mean, that's a lot of our mind. So I guess that's why I came to do this with you guys. Well, that's basically what we're aiming at doing. We're aiming at putting together the workshops where we can introduce material to players that's digestible for them to understand and, and uh, retain. And so we're trying to build programs and working with different companies and people like partner with startups to help us educate these players in the space of venture capitalism. But first and foremost, so financial literacy is something that you should always be trying to uh, work on and get yourself. A lot of uh, NFL players don't come from a background where there's a lot of financial literacy. 
So I would, uh, you know, preview them before coming and doing what we're doing on financial literacy. And uh, we actually, you know, my friend does uh, financial wellness. So um, there are people we know who do that, but we're specifically in the industry for capitalism. But our whole idea is to put together education workshops that they just continue to do it. And people said this, and a lot of people know, we have a for why. They do, and they pay for your education. I'm currently applying for my scholarship to go to a Taylor and a different school, which will be paid for by different NFL programs. And what the problem is for the NFL programs is a lot of players don't know about them, and then they don't know how to tap into them. So they don't, like I said earlier, seek that, edu that extra education for their education themselves, and they'll find themselves consuming information that will lead them. Most of them uh, go on and not even know about these these different programs that they can do with continuing education. So the last one, last one. Uh, another question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just a quick one. My name is Matt Walter, and I'm with the Canadian Council here in Miami, and I work with the Innovation and Technology Portfolio. Uh, I wanted to ask a little bit. Uh, we know down that there's 500 startups, and, and for you guys too, uh, where do you suggest that people locate their investments and what part? South Florida, and uh, you know, to your point about um, the growth of the people, which is very interesting because a lot of people are not really part of the calculus. Um, but my question is, how do you look at the deployment of capital, and what strategy do you do in terms of deploying capital, guarding against risk in the market? Yeah. Um, to answer your first one, is the why we came to South Florida is we believe that there's building blocks here where we can uh, help grow an ecosystem. Um, obviously, we want to make good investments, but we also want to grow ecosystems because we believe that's a flywheel that supports all parties involved. So that's the answer to one. Uh, number two, in terms of the deployment of capital, um, we when we make investments around the world, I, I kind of briefed uh, earlier about what it is that we look for in folks. Um, regarding your question, if you're asking how the startups use their capital once they well, Use that capital once they receive it. My question in general is beyond growing money. What is your goal in terms of the impact that you create with your investments in terms of social change, which is the true capital that you bring with all your achievements in society? So I guess I'll start. Uh, so when I say affordable housing, I don't have a like, government assisted affordable housing. We're, we're, well, we did that in the past, but now what we're doing is co-living, which it's kind of hard to explain. So a traditional two-bedroom apartment might cost $2,000 a month. What we're doing is we're converting it into a three-bedroom apartment, 
where 800 bucks each tenant, so they get to live there for cheaper than they would have lived next uh, next door. But we're also bringing more value to the investors, bringing their profits up about 20 percent. Outside of that, Bryant Family Foundation that does you know athletics and educational programming you know, around academics. Uh, you know. She wants to know what you guys are doing with the money on the other side. To the people around you. I know what Mark did in that. Well, I don't think it needs to be uh, one side of town or anything. I think that um, you know, uh, we can we can go to uh, uh, and we can do affordable housing. But why don't we just um, uh, town right here on this game and then use the uh, use the public benefit and uh, uh, and build it to six. 70 floor. Why can't those affordable people be in that kind of high end building where we already, uh, I mean, the public benefits there, give them two, three floors, right? You know, so I mean, they don't have to be redirected. Uh, the development is, is already there, the numbers are there. You're already going to give them a, a police station in there on the part of the public, public benefit. So give the uh, affordable housing three floors. What's three floors out of 58? You guys uh, are good at making money or turning it into more money. Do you have a story like Mark Cuban? Any of you have a story? Mark Cuban, I think, was able to or was offered to get in for a million dollars on Uber. He uh, he did not. Uh, do you guys have any great story like that? Of not a spectacular success. We've been celebrating your achievement, but just like a colossal error. Just like something, <laughs> some place where you were just you were just. You know you come back anytime. <laughs> It was fairly low investment. I should have did it. It, it came from uh, one of my business mentors who's on the board of the investment group that we were in. And he's also in a very uh, popular investment group in the band called the Band of 300, the Band of Angels. Everybody knows that fund. Um, that is. Um, he was kind of offering it to me because I was the expertise in athletes and I should have taken the deal. Why? I don't know. <laughs> wasn't, I just wasn't impressed enough, but I think that company is still in work and probably have to Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>